Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. This is the start of a new sporadic series aimed at helping us to use the 6x6 paper pads in our stash. Full confession time, I know I said I wasn't going to buy any more pattern paper, but I did. I was in Hobbycraft yesterday and I saw these two paper pads and was immediately struck with the idea of doing this series so I bought them and I'm not sorry. So the idea with this series is that in each episode I will make a card using one or other of these pads but don't worry if you haven't got any six by six paper pads you can use any pattern paper for this or even backgrounds that you've made yourself using mixed media techniques or stamping, stenciling, whatever. So everyone should be able to join in with this series. Before we get into making today's card though, I thought I'd give you a few tips on how to get the most out of your paper pad. So yesterday I sat down and I went through all my inks, my Distress Oxide inks and my Catherine Pooler inks, and I matched up ink colours with the colours in the pads. So this is the one for this pastel pad, and I hope you can see how my Distress Oxides go with the patterns, the colours. I also did, as I say, my Catherine Poolers, so I found those. And then I did my Mild Liners and my Dot Markers. So now I've got some inks and some pens that I can use with each paper pad. And I did the same with this one. I didn't have quite as many colours in this range but that's okay next i went through my papers and decided to pull out some solids or near solids that go with the patterns or the colors rather and this is the one for the pastel paper pad i didn't want to bring any pattern paper in apart from those as i say that read like solids so this one is the similar peach to that but it's got little white flecks on so I thought that would work but the rest are solid so I've got quite a few for the pastel pad again I think I'm a pastel person and again I haven't got quite as many for this design paper pad but I did find some paper effect papers or almost wood grainy and then some greeny blues that match these Finally, I went through my washi tape stash and pulled out all the tapes that I thought would work with the paper pads. I also made sure to include a metallic. So for this one, I picked a rose gold metallic washi tape. And for this one, I picked a gold washi tape. So those would be my top tips for getting ready to work your way through a paper pad. Go through your inks, your papers, your washi tapes and any other supplies that you might have and gather them into a project pack. So for today's video, I'm going to use the pastel paper pad and I'm gonna take out one piece of paper from each design so that I can get a bit of a feel for them. So we're really looking at the kind of peachy, dark peach tones. We've got some greens, we've got a, a slightly, I guess, yellower green, a more minty green, and then a darker green. We've got some blues here mixed in with the peachy tones and one purple stripy paper. The first thing that grabs me is this, and to me this looks like tiles. So I think I'm going to create some tiles. I've got here a stitched square die. And if I put that on there, I can grab pretty much one tile's worth. So I'm going to cut some like this. I'm going to cut some with the blue pattern in the middle. And I'll also cut a few from each of the other papers. And I think we'll do some quilting. So you obviously don't need to have the exact same paper pad that I've got. But I bet you could quilt a hexagon or squares or diamonds with whatever paper pad that you're thinking of using for this project. Right, 
Right, I've now got three of each tile. I've decided not to use the purple violet one today because I think it's a bit surplus to requirements for this pattern. I think with the peach, the blues, and the greens, we've got enough colour going on. And before I stick these to anything, I want to work out my pattern. I really love these tiles, so I think I want them to be kind of the focal point. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work yet. Right, I think I've settled on a pattern. So I've got this in the centre and a row of three there, and then I've got some, the blues either side. And then I've brought in these peaches to go with the blues. And then everything else is kind of arranged randomly, fairly randomly, around the outside. Because I don't want the pattern to be too repeating. So this is the focal point, and then these are the the tiles around the outside and what I'm going to do now and that's in my way <laughs> very carefully I've got a piece of double-sided adhesive here and I'm going to add this to this piece of smooth white cardstock this will give me something to stick my tiles to I'm going to start in the middle press that down I'm going to leave a little gap because I'm going to do some grouting in a minute. Ordinarily I would put my head right over to make sure I'm getting everything lined up properly but as I'm videoing that's not really practical. Right now I've cleared a space over here So there we have our tiles and I'm going to do my grouting in a minute but before I do anything else I'm going to remove the excess sticky because I don't need to grout that. Right for my grouting I'm going to use this detail white opaque embossing powder. I'm going to sprinkle it all over my tiles and it will stick to the sticky bits in between each tile. Because I couldn't treat this with my anti-static powder tool, some of the tiles have embossing powder on, but I'm just going to brush those off before I heat it. And now I'm going to heat it with my heat tool. I think the trick with the heating is to keep the heat tool moving. If you hold it in one place for too long, the sticky underneath the tiles will start to shrink and the tiles will start to move. So just keep that heat tool moving and keep it long enough to melt the embossing powder and no longer. Right, I'm going to trim this down. It's going to go on a card. And I think I want to just chop off that green dot there so it fits on a four by six inch card blank. Yeah, and that will fit on there. So now I just want to chop down the sides a bit. I'll keep these bits because you never know when you might need a little strip of something. And this you could add in any kind of way you like. You could have it coming in from the top, in from the bottom. You could have a panel or a strip across the front. I'm thinking in from the bottom. So I'm going to add glue to the back of this and stick it on my card blank. 
It's slightly wide for my card blank, but once it's glued down, I'll be able to trim it off exactly. So that's the bottom part of my card. And I was thinking a little bit of gold foiled washi tape right there. Yep, I like that. And I'm going to use my embossing tool just to run along the edge of this panel to bevel the edges, make it look a bit neater. For my sentiment, I'm going to heat emboss in black on vellum this Happiest of Birthdays to You stamp and cut it out with its shadow die. That way, the sentiment will stand out, but because I'm using vellum, you'll still be able to see the pattern behind it. So I treat the vellum with my anti-static powder tool, which is just corn flour or cornstarch in an old sock. And for stamping in black ink on vellum, I like to use stays on because it dries quickly and doesn't smudge or smear. It doesn't bead up on the vellum. Now I'm going to go over that with embossing ink so that I can clear emboss over the top. So there's the sentiment. I'm happy with that. But I don't want to pop it there. I think I'm going to pop it here like that. And to attach it, I'm going to use some of this Crafters Companion Tape Runner, which is pretty good at not showing through vellum when I can get it to come out. I think we're almost at the end of the tape, so it's uh, a bit stubborn. And hover that around about there. I'd like to add some little embellishments, little dots on here, and I think I want to do it in rose gold. And as I haven't got any rose gold cardstock, and to make sure it matches really well, I'm going to die cut some little circles from a piece of cardstock to which I've added the same washi tape. So I'm going to use this wobbly circle die. So that's the remnant. So I'm not going to keep that because this might come in handy and I'll put that in my little project pack. And I'll also save the dots that I don't use. I'll pop them in a little pot and put that in my project pack as well. Just have a little spot of glue there and grab the larger dots, my larger wobbly circles, dip it in and then add a few sprinkles around and about the place. So there we go, that is the first card done for this paper pack series. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you an idea of something you can do with a 6x6 paper pad in your stash. If you've gleaned any helpful hints, do let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe and I'll see you back here very soon for another video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.